welcome to live Barclays Women's Super League Football here from Goodison Park on BBC One. We have 22 live matches to bring you across the season and we cannot wait to get started. It's already been a magnificent year of women's sport, from the Olympics to Wimbledon to, of course, the 100 as well. And now it is time for the WSL. The chance to pull the trigger! What a finish! A special goal! Chelsea are champions again! Our thanks to Olympic gold medalist Lauren Price and 17-year-old Alice Capsey of the Oval Invincibles for getting us off to such a fine start. Everton arrived a little earlier, having had somewhat of a squad overhaul. Nine new signings they've had in a busy summer transfer window. They're looking to go better than last season's fifth place. Manchester City took champions Chelsea right down to the wire. It was the final day of the season before Chelsea won the title. And City will be looking to make an early statement of intent here this afternoon. And it is fantastic to see the return of WSL fans at stadiums as well. 5,000 have bought tickets ahead of today. They're expecting walk-ups as well, hopefully to create a wonderful atmosphere. Conditions are perfect. It's Everton against Manchester City live from Goodison Park with kickoff just 10 minutes away. And what a lineup we have for you in the studio as well with some WSL icons, no doubt. Uh, Farrah Williams, of course, most capped England player, won the title with Liverpool. And she's known as Queen Farrah around these parts uh, for her eight years, uh, Toffee. Uh, of course, Rachel Yankee as well, an England stalwart, an Arsenal stalwart, eight titles for the Gunners, goodness me. And fresh, very fresh, Katie Allen from last night's victory. Manchester United captain, your victory over Reading 2-0 uh, last night kind of got the whole ball rolling, didn't it? And how was it for you, Katie, to be back in a stadium with fans and getting off to such a great start? Yeah, it was amazing to get the three points and hit the ground running. But like you said, even better with a full Lee Stadium there and hopefully a performance for us to build on. Did it feel different, though, when you heard the noise and the roar of fans? Yeah, for sure. Even when we just come out for the warm-up, it's like an extra boost, an extra lift. And our fans are amazing and made the atmosphere incredible. Well, of course, you know, we are making a lot of this because we've got 22 matches through this season and sharing it, of course, with Sky, who had last night's match. This is really important for women's football. And it's incredible that this is the first ever terrestrial live league game. Rachel, what are you looking for kind of in terms of what happens next in the game from the exposure that's going to happen for women's football this year? Oh, I'm just hoping that it really explodes. Um, you know, for all the young kids out there that can now see women's football, whether it's boys or girls, you know, you have something to look at. You have role models. When I was a kid, if you asked me football, I was, uh, you know, I'd just tell you about a male player. I didn't know that there was any female players playing. Didn't even know that there was an England team or an Arsenal team, my favourite favorite team you know until I was actually in that situation so people have a dream now they can see it it's real and hopefully everyone buys into it and let's not beat about the bush Farah this is a big game because Everton for all the progress they made last season couldn't beat any of the top three could they and you just feel on the first day of the season with the city side that have got a lot of the spine of the team missing that this is a really big opportunity for a team that have strengthened so much this summer yeah, massive opportunity. I think you mentioned there, City, they've been the leading team in women's football for a long time now. And the likes of Everton and teams around that, like Man United, really want to chase that pack. You've seen the investment this year with Everton, nine new, new signings. Um, I'm expecting a fantastic game and a really tight game. Excellent stuff. Well, let's hear from the managers then. And we're going to start with the Everton manager, Willie Kirk, Joe Curry, asking the questions. We just want, want to carry on what they've been doing in pre-season, which has basically been working hard. Uh, working very, very hard. I think we're in a great place fitness-wise. We're really well conditioned. Uh, we've been working on our, our game model and, and and trying to play in an exciting way and an attacking way. Uh, we're going a slightly different shape today and uh, we've worked on that probably 50% of the time through pre-season and, and make sure that we're adaptable. We've got a couple of different ways that we can play. and. 
it'll be good to see the new signs on the pitch and, and I suppose one thing we want to see is how well they've uh, they've managed to sort of gel with the, with the rest of the girls. We need to recognise what we achieved last season and we need to understand what it's going to take to, to go one better and I think it's, I've always spoken about this league, it's a challenging league because there's only 22 games and you need to be really consistent. Um, I think the, the challenge this year will be tough because there's a lot of other teams, the likes of Everton, who've really recruited well. So I think it's going to be an exciting league again. Tony Duggan in the starting lineup for Everton today after an eight year absence from her childhood club. She's been chatting to a man this week Toffees fans know very well indeed, Leon Osman. Duggan. Tony Duggan's own make it. No right to do that. Well, Tony, welcome back to the WSL. Pleased to be here. Ah, oh, buzzing. I was just missing home so much, and obviously coming back to the WSL, it's such a fantastic league. So it was a no-brainer. I was coming home, and I always wanted to come back to Everton as well. Was it the only club you were going to come back for? I think so, yeah. I mean, I did have decisions to make, but my time at Everton, I absolutely love the club. I played Champions League with them and to get Champions League football back at this club is a massive ambition and the club have really got behind the women's team, so it was a no-brainer. I wanted to come home and I wanted to be at Everton. Champions League football, is that the step this season? Are we looking further than that and what you may accomplish beyond that? No, this season, definitely. We've said it loud and clear. We've said it to the media. We've said it in the meeting rooms. It's our ambition. We want to be in the Champions League by next year. And with the ambition, the players that we've brought in, all internationals, they're all winners. They've brought medals. You know, we just need to believe in ourselves now. And I think we can really do it. How big an adjustment was was making that step to play and live for that lifestyle out in Spain. It was a fantastic experience. I have no regrets. I learned a new language. I wouldn't say I'm fluent, <laughs> but I can get by in Spanish. Um, I don't think many people would have thought that. But yeah, it was just an amazing experience on and off the pitch. And I do think I've took my game to the next level, but it's about coming back to England now and showing that. And you'll be wearing the famed number nine shirt this season. When you think of all the Everton legends that have worn it before you down the years, is it, is it an honour? Is it a hindrance? Yeah, it's tough. They asked me what number I wanted to be. I was open for like a subtle number 11 or 7, but they weren't available. But yeah, I mean, number 9, I, I'm a big player now. I need to take responsibility. I'm 30 years of age and I want to try and help the club in the best way that I can. Also, individually, I have the ambition to get back in the England team as well. So, the number 9 on my back, hopefully I can help me do that. Not good. Great turn. Oh, it's tremendous. Moving on to the first game of the season against your former club, Manchester City. How does it feel to be facing them? I knew it was going to happen. That's football <laughs> for you, isn't it? It was always going to be the way. And obviously we're playing at Goodison, so it's going to be a special day. And come the day, I just need to put that all aside. And, you know, our ambition is Champions League football. And if we want to be talking about that level of football, then we have to beat teams like Manchester City. Last year, that's where the girls fell short. And I think that's where it starts, the 4th of September against City. And we know you're really close to your granddad, Kent. Will he be in the crowd for the first match? Yeah, I mean, he loves it. That's what I miss the most after the game, having your family all around you. And I'm just so happy to be back and have all that in place now. So, yeah. Well, good luck for the season. Thanks, Leon. I'm sure Tony's going to get a great reception. And uh, the signings that they've made this summer, Everton, are really interesting, aren't they? Obviously, Tony's coming back home, but three Swedish players who won silver medals at the Olympics just a few weeks ago are really breaking the bank in many ways with Benison. But it's actually Natalie Bjorn you want to have a closer look at, Farah. Yeah, Natalie Bjorn, a very experienced player, somebody who's very experienced in Champions League. I believe this is one of the reasons why they brought her to the club with the ambition of reaching that top three this season. But a very assured centre half that's very good at travelling into the game and finding those switch passes that Everton like to do. So, yeah, really looking forward to seeing how she progresses in this team this season. And if the aim is Champions League football at the end of this season, when you look across the piece, are those signings for you good enough to get Everton that step closer to the top? Yeah, most definitely. I think, you know, they leaked goals last year that they didn't need to. So signing a solid centre half with the experience that Beyond has, I think it's important. They've also signed another goal scorer. 
So, uh, that and then a young midfielder that I'm really excited uh, to look and see how she can progress in this league. Rachel, let's have a little look at Manchester City's acquisitions, a, a team that uh, they did lose a couple of big names, uh, certainly in terms of their World Cup winners, didn't they? Uh, Mewis and Laval left uh, in the summer, but you're pretty impressed uh, with the signing of Vicky Lasada. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I had the privilege of playing with Vicky Lasada at Arsenal and such a skillful player. You know, she can play in, uh, in the pivot role, she can play in number 10, you can, anywhere in that midfield. You, you know a footballer when they're not scared to get on the ball under pressure and that's Vicky, uh, she's fantastic and I think for her it was difficult for her in Barcelona, she loves the club and I'm sure she didn't want to leave but to come here and to feel settled I think you'll see a fantastic footballer. And you can see why the WSL is such a draw Katie because Katie at the Olympics the WSL had more players representing various countries than the American leagues did, the North American leagues, which says something about the attraction of this league, doesn't it? Yeah, totally. You can see the sort of signings that have come to the WSL this year and the league is just growing year in, year out. And I think some of the signings, both Everton, Man City and all the other teams across the league have made the attraction of the league is really getting high now. It truly is an international league, but of course, it's an England captain who leads Manchester City out onto the pitch today. Their first match of this new campaign away from home at Goodison Park against an Everton side who have strengthened, who have ambition and who should provide us this afternoon with a really interesting encounter. You feel it is an opportunity for Everton this afternoon because they haven't beaten the top three last season. That's what you've got to do if you want to find yourself in those top places qualifying for the Champions League. Let's hand you now over to our commentary team this afternoon, a woman who knows her way very well around this ground and this neck of the woods, Rachel Brown Finnis, is alongside Robin Cowan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Gabby. Hello, everyone. A brand new season begins, new players to the WSL and fresh challenges ahead. Expectations high for both Everton and Manchester City this season. Everton failed to take a single point on the so-called Big Three in the last campaign, but some savvy investment in eight new senior players has them hoping they can be the ones to upset the established order. For City, four consecutive second-place finishes in the Women's Super League. Can they make that final step after adding to an already impressive squad? Willie Kirk, the Everton manager, knows that the pressure is on with the investment that has been made. Four WSL debuts for the home side today. Swedish internationals Natalie Bjorn and Anna Anvagar, who leads the line. Aurora Gali becomes the first Italian player in the Super League into the midfield. Kenza Dali makes her first competitive appearance since joining from West Ham. And there's a second debut for Tony Duggan, who's returned to her former club after four years spell in Spain. City have some significant absences. Ellie Roebuck, Lucy Bronze, Kira Walsh are all unavailable through injury. Ellen White is only fit enough for the bench. There are debuts for new signings. Vicky Lasada, who's joined from Barcelona. Hayley Rasso, who spent last season at Everton. And Jamaican international Khadija Shaw. And so a new Women's Super League season starts. It all began last night, Manchester United starting with a win against Reading. And both of these two teams will hope to be up there. And that is the woman in the middle, Kirsty Dow, vastly experienced WSL referee, as well as refereeing games in the Champions League. And there is Gareth Taylor who has kept up this remarkable record for City against Everton. They are unbeaten in their last 16 in all competitions against their opponents today. And so it all starts here for Manchester City and Everton at Goodison Park in front of supporters for the first time in 18 months. 
terrific occasion. And just before kickoff, the players will take the knee to show their continued support for the fight against all forms of discrimination on Kirsty Dow's whistle. And so we are underway. Manchester City in the light blue kit, kicking from left to right, kick off the game. And Everton in the royal blue shirts, kicking from right uh, to left. And an early touch here for the returning Tony Duggan back at the club where her career started, where she made her debut at the age of just 15. Rachel Brown Finnis, a club close to your heart and one who has high expectations, as we've mentioned this season. The chance here to get the cross in. Manchester City, a frenetic beginning to this WSL game. Here is Caroline Weir. Had a good tournament with Team GB at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. I think uh, it's been a lively start, both teams. Good to see Tony Duggan back on the ball in an Everton blue shirt after uh, spells abroad, spells at Manchester City. I played with her when she was joined the team at 15, 16, 17, and she was a sensation. She'll be looking to get that form back for Everton this season. Everton haven't beaten Manchester City in any of their 10 WSL games so far. They'll be hoping that changes. Their record against the top four last season wasn't good. Didn't take a single point off any of the teams above them. A free kick to Manchester City here. Tony, uh, Debbie Stokes having her shirt pulled back. There's not been any breakthroughs through the, the back lines. Ooh. Coombs has lost it to opposite number, Kenza Darley. This could be an early opportunity for Everton here. It's Darley. Didn't get hold of it, trickles wide. Fantastic run from Darley. She's one of the players who really excites me. I thought she did well at West Ham United in a tough team, to be fair, a lot of change in that team. But she picks the ball up exceptionally well there. And we see the front three are going to rotate across from right to left for centre. It's going to be fluid. Three exciting players in that front. Manchester City have already played a competitive game. That was on Wednesday, away at Real Madrid. It was 1-1 in their game in the Champions League, and they'll have the return leg this Wednesday. And they looked slightly shaky in Madrid at times, conceded very, very late on in stoppage time, that equaliser. And as we heard from Gareth Taylor earlier, not played a single game in pre-season. Here is Khadija Shaw, the exciting Jamaican signing. First corner kick of the game goes to City. On Khadija Shaw, she says she's only uh, ever called Khadija if she's in trouble. So I need to refer to her as Bunny Shaw. So Bunny Shaw, she's an exciting prospect, isn't she? Not just for Manchester City, uh, with Ellen White being out, but for the league as a whole. So we'll wear Bunny on the back of her shirt, as you can see there. Her nickname picked up in childhood because of her love of carrots. Worst nicknames. Glad you explained it, though. <laughs> it's a great header actually on that corner from Gabby George, another player for Everton for her, from being a very young player from 17. She's been with the club, come back from a long-term injury as well. So great to see Gabby George back out on the pitch, starting for Everton. And the guard. Caught Alex Greenwood late on as Shaw tries to pressure McKeever. That's coolly done at the back by Everton. Horton's pass is cut out. Everton try and get it forward quickly. 
into the arms of Benamur, making only her second WSL appearance for Manchester City, despite joining them two seasons ago. She played in their final game of last season against West Ham. Ellie Roebuck, number one, is, is out. And Karen Bardsley not fit enough either. You have a 17-year-old goalkeeper on the bench. Yeah, Benamur came. She was the understudy to both Karen Bardsley Russell. and Ellie Roebuck. Well dealt with by Sandy McKeever in the Everton goal. Commanding. So a little bit of um, a little bit of delay, maybe a little bit of hesitation between Benamur and Esme Morgan. Manchester City in the, in the defending third there. Not so. Lissanda McKeever, highly rated goalkeeper for England. Another one who's at the Olympics this summer. Again, Everton picking up the ball. Look a little bit sharper early on here. Kenza Darley looking energetic as well. Here is the skipper, Danielle Turner. Now, oh, George, as you mentioned, Rachel, coming back from an ACL injury which she suffered just before the pandemic hit. Yeah, lonely times. Uh, she she posted on social. I've been in touch with Gabby. She's, you know, a, a very lively person and character. Great to be around. But for anyone, you know, that is it's a lonely time being injured and coming back from that. But to be in the building or not in the building, as it were, during the pandemic, and to be rehabbing on your own, it's tough. Which makes it even more proud of a moment for today. It's a good touch by Duggan. And the guard will give chase here. Orton pokes it out of play. Looking lively, and the guard so far. First time I have seen her, eyes on, seen her in pre season matches. But seeing that front three of Darley, Duggan, and Anvergaard so far causing more problems to City than City are to Everton. Oh, and well, Steph Orton, I think, wanted the goalkeeper to come, and in the end, an awkward piece of defending. From an Everton point of view, no one there to take advantage. Now again, you would think there didn't seem to be much of a call from Benamir, and that's what can happen. Defender takes control of it rather than the goalkeeper. Weir is fouled. Izzy Christensen, another one of another of those players who has played for both of the teams, former Manchester City. These. A lot of these players know each other exceptionally well, whether it's at England, Team GB, or having played for their former employers. Horton with the long diagonal. It's a perfect pinpoint pass to Becky. Tries to pull it back. Shaw was there. Everton managed to get the ball away eventually. Christensen. Duggan helping out now, here's Natalie Bjorn. With the Swedish contingent who's arrived at Everton. The space here for Stokes to advance and look up. Away by Christensen. Biggest threat so far have come down that left-hand side for Manchester City. Janine Becky, first overlap for Demi Stokes there. Sure, Willie Kirk will be adjusting anything should he need to, ensuring that the delivery is not made. That's a key thing. Signed a new deal until June 2023, Willie Kirk. Different burden on his shoulders this season, having previously managed Bristol City. Did a tremendous job in keeping them in the WSL. With Hibbs as well in Scotland. As Everton try and work it out from the back. Manchester City try and pounce. Here's Vicky Lasada, Champions League winner with Barcelona last season. Part of that team that beat Chelsea 4 0 in the final. And here is Esme Morgan. Successful loan spell at Everton a couple of seasons back. She's filled in at a number of positions, Esme Morgan. And we've got Lucy Bronze at starting at right back. It's a tough shoes to fill. Becky finding some space. Numbers in the box. Becky goes alone. Straight into the gloves of McKeever. 
Yeah, good positioning from Sandy McKeever. We said that it'd been busy down that left-hand side. As a defender, you can't afford to let, you know, Janine Becky's right-footed keeper down that left-hand side. She's going to want to cut in and certainly take a, like Tony Duggan's going to want to do down the left-hand side for Everton, cut in and get that shot off. Just stepped in the defender there, allows Becky to get a shot off. The gold medal winner from Tokyo. And again, there goes Becky. This is being becoming an issue for Everton. She shanked that one, but you're absolutely right, Rachel. Down the Manchester City left, Everton look a little bit exposed. Yeah, it's, it's Sevecki, I, I think, is a problem in that she's coming inside, trying to congest it midfield, uh, in the midfield, oh, sorry, centrally, which is a good thing because dangerous, uh, more, it's more dangerous to, to go down the middle, but it's leaving Janine Becky in acres of space. I would uh, suggest that Everton need to go a little bit tighter in that particular position. Turner's lost it now. Lasada. Now Weir. Don't let her shoot from those sort of positions. She can be deadly. She's lost it here. That ball towards Ambergard. Not precise enough. Lasada. Now Weir. Well, that's a warning shot for Everton because you don't want to let Caroline Weir onto that left foot of hers. Yeah, absolutely, but it started from an Everton goal kick and they've done this a couple of times now. Trying to play out from the back is, is great, but if I was in goal for Everton, now it's about making that choice. OK, let's release the pressure, just like we've seen now, Sandy. McKeever going long, release the pressure, allow your team to get up. It's not been the ideal preparation for Gareth Taylor and Manchester City coming into this one. Boatload of injuries to senior players, but they look calm, they look composed, like they know their jobs. Still feels a little bit, I'm not quite comfortable with the fact that they've not had a pre-season match. That doesn't sit easy. Surely it has to be a way of scheduling in, whether it's bringing in development players to fill the slots of those players who are away from the Olympics. Um, I do understand there's a lot of juggling, but surely that's what they're there for. No foul on Horton. Here's Ambergard. It's a really good block from Alex Greenwood. Now playing more as a centre-half, traditionally a left-back, but yeah. since rejoining Man City, and I think that's where she sees her future. I prefer that. I think, I think her strengths lie in reading the game in front of her, um, especially with the development of what's required at full-back, um, you know, the overlapping runs, uh, into the final third, her delivery absolutely no quality, uh, no no question. She has fantastic quality, but I think reading the game, using that, stepping out from defence when she can, because she's excellent technically on the ball. Right. Left centre half suits her perfectly. It's Finnegan goes long. It's Savecki. Greenwood comes away with it. Oh, and there's a lot of space here for Rasso against her former club. Motoring into the penalty area. Rasso tipped onto the crossbar and over it by Sandy McKeever. That's what can happen. Play three at the back. Dan Turner, that uh, left wing back, had bombed on and they were caught out. That was exactly the balls required. Hayley Rasso, former Everton players of last season. But Gabby George's got to get over a little bit quicker, does well to force her on a tight angle. And Sandra McKeever turns over well for Everton. The corner kick for City. Haley <laughs> Russo is at the Olympic Games with her country, Australia. And they lost in the bronze medal match to the USA. We're deep delivery towards Horton. Well defended. And perhaps Everton can catch Manchester City on the counter. Darley. Khadija Shaw, yes, was offside. The flag has gone up. 
Mon bunny show, ça y est, bunny show. <laughs> In some ways, put Jamaican football on the map. Um, you know, they I remember them qualifying, I think it was for the World Cup for the first time ever, and the movement that was behind them, the, the finances, they'd not had a national team, sorry, a, a women's team qualify for the World Cup before. It's part of a phenomenal story. Prolific for a country as well, top scorer. Here is Janine Becky, again, finding some joy. And the city left, Christensen into Duggan, lovely touch, rides the challenge as well. Christensen. and finished fifth last season but a pretty sizable 16 points behind the Champions League positions a big gap to to narrow there yeah and we heard at the start of the program that they're not taking points off any of the top three they were consistent in that but they'll certainly want to improve on that points tally Good play by Weir, covering back. Greenwood under pressure from Tony Duggan. I like the look of the midfield with Izzy Christensen and Aurora Galli. I think she started exceptionally well, really under the radar type of player, her movement. Um, only short and sharp, but seemed to complement each other really well and seem to have a, a, a real telepathy already in front of that back three. It's a good run from the centre-half position by George. It's a deep cross, nearly caught out Ben Amur. They've been pinned back, haven't they, really, for this last 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes. Likes of Janine Becky, having quite a lot of joy down that left-hand side. Not really ever troubling, carrying Ben Amur. Don't think she's going to convince us that was an effort on goal. <laughs> If it went in, I'm sure she would try. Greenwood, another ex-Everton player, started her career there, went to Liverpool, has also played for Manchester United as well as City. She likes the controversy to Alex Greenwood. Clearly doesn't mind a bit of that. Crossing enemy lines. Morgan with the header. She had to get something on it. Yeah, quick thinking from Bjorn, lovely diagonal. Was it ever going to get over, but forced Esme Morgan into an error. And as much as Everton have tried to breach the back line of Manchester City in open play, this could be their chance. It's going to be Izzy Christensen to take this corner kick. Defended by City, Dali helps it back in, well over. Reasonable effort there from Dali. Tried to keep it down, just couldn't quite get a leg up and over it. Is the chewing gum coming out already, I think? Willie Kirk. Oh, Lasada, that was very risky. It's Amber Gard. Great save by Benemure. And Horton clears up. Good save down to her right, Benemure. One she would have expected to save, but beautifully nicked off. Well intercepted. Poor, uh, poor pass choice. Couldn't quite find the corner, Amber Gard. What a start that would have been on her Everton debut. Two golden boots in the Damel Svenskan in Sweden. Anna Anvergaard. Yes. Your potent striker. And that's a pass intercepted by Caroline Weir now. Can't quite find Becky. Everton will try and start again.
I really want to see when Everton regain possession, similar to that playing across the back. I want to see Dan Turner, the wing back number three, really stretch out Manchester City. I know it's a bit of a gamble, but when you're in possession, to create chances, you need that. Make the pitch bigger, and really stretch out Man City. It's a little bit too easy out of possession for Manchester City at the moment. Stokes. It's Lasada. Former Arsenal player on the domestic double with them. Morgan. It's another good long diagonal that Horton has pulled off, so adept at that pass. Becky, now Weir. It's a brilliant pass, okay, I agree with you, uh, but just your starting position, read the timing of the ball, there's plenty of time to, to adjust for, for Savecki there to be able to challenge for the ball. Too many times, that's landed at her feet, Janine Becky, she didn't get in advance with a touch this time. But it's an adjustment that needs to be made. They've been very consistent over the years, Manchester City, but they've only won a single WSL title in 2016. Since then, they finished second place. Either Chelsea or Arsenal. That's a decent looking ball across. Ball's here for Lasada. Oof. Not far away at all. Yeah, she had time, didn't she, to pick a spot. You could see her take a touch out of her feet, have a look up. She picked that top left-hand corner. And luckily for Everton, it whistled just fractionally wide. It's not the best area to clear it in, Dan Turner. Centrally to the edge of the box, uh, someone who's just won the Champions League. But Everton living on the edge a little bit in this opening 20 minutes. That was addressed directly to Dan Turner by <laughs> Rachel Brown Finnis. Former Everton goalkeeper. I was a goalie, I didn't mince my words, just say it as it is. <laughs> and, and no, it's, it was never, it never is anything personal across, it's just who is cul culpable at that time. Of course not. Yes, no. no grudges here. Lasada trying to find short. Akiva quick off her line. Like to try and get the best out of the players around me. That's why I brought you 12 bags of Quavers and 75 <laughs> double-deckers. Just watch me try and get out of this press box. Which is not as easy as you may think via a ladder, <laughs> is it? Not when you're five foot one, no. Might be here till the next game. Decision given to Manchester City. This was the Vicky Lasada chance once again. So like she had a little bit more time than she thought, maybe. You couldn't have had more time, really. She had time <laughs> to take it down, literally look up, decide where you're going to put it, and then just really missed out fractionally on the execution. She'd be disappointed. You know, that's almost like a, a set piece in some ways, the amount of time that she had. Stokes, Manchester City passing it about with confidence here. With a loose one from Morgan, but Greenwood was there to pick up the pieces. We know what the style of play is for Manchester City. It's play it around the back, play it into that number four, who today is Laura Coombs for position. Normally, Kira Walsh has established herself as that holding midfielder for both England as well as certainly Manchester City, missing today for injury. But the star remains the same. Corner kick. So far, Buddy Shaw has been well marked on these. I think it's by, uh, been by Savecki. 
tall player. Steph Horton, Janine Becky, Esme Morgan, all good targets in the area. They are very good at set pieces, Manchester City, although they did lose the Tower of Power. Sam Mewis, who scored seven goals last season, mainly with her head. It's a good delivery, just flicks off her City head, I think. So the referee has given it uh, as a City throw. I think it was one of the Everton defenders challenging with Bunny Shaw. She looked sure to get her head on the board, just couldn't quite get the elevation for it. Becky with a delivery. Play by George. That's great play from Greenwood. Shrugging off the challenge and finding Demi Stokes. Couldn't quite work the angle. Finds Becky. That's a really good run by Weir. Here's Lasada. Oh, off the post and in. She doesn't miss this time. Manchester City's dominance gets its just reward. What a goal, though, from start to finish, from the interception and the cool-headedness of Alex Greenwood to slide the ball forward to Demi Stokes, who drives into the box, as we've seen her do so many times for club and country. There's Janine Becky, who passes it, slides it through to Caroline Weir, fancies it herself, but when Vicky Lasada from 12 yards out is given a second chance with no pressure on the ball, she doesn't make a mistake. What a finish that is. No mistake. In off the upright, and City deservedly a lead 1 0. Thought when she took that touch, has she made the wrong choice again? But in off the post means it's absolutely impossible for Everton to keep that one out. They try and respond straight away. And Rasso has taken a tumble over the advertising boardings. We've only been ex teammates for about three weeks. So thanks you get. That's all it takes. <laughs> Not teammates anymore. Good win by George. Christensen. And the guard. This is neat play by Everton. Duggan. Christensen. Onto Duggan who's taken it down, but the flag is up. Ooh, I thought that was really, really tight. So we don't have VAR in the Women's Super League. Looking at it, I think she was just fractionally offside. Good defensive shape from Manchester City stepping out all together. The first time that we saw, we've seen Tony Duggan really kind of spring into action in that central role. Two seasons at Barcelona and Atletico Madrid each. Now back at what she calls home. She was literally born in Everton Valley, which is just to the left of our commentary position here. Less than two minutes walk from the ground itself. So she and her family knew a, a granddad, know a granddad, Ken from her days at Everton and Joe, her mum, all the family, her brothers. You know, they'll be all really excited to have her back here, but have her back home, as she said. It's just drifted out of play. It's going to be an Everton throw. Big season, big season for her, big season for Everton. Big season for Willie Kirk. Finds his side behind once again against Manchester City. A bit of an ominous statistic that Manchester City haven't lost their previous 25 games in which they've taken the lead. They know how to hang on to one. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see whether he does change his tactics, play through at the back. Because asking Erika Savecki to do a right-back's job, really, she's not a defensive-minded player at all. She's very much 
you know, a, a wide, high midfielder. Here's Darley. Well defended by Horton. Straight back to Kenza Darley. will get a second opportunity here. It's Duncan who is winding up for the sideways scissor kick. There have been openings for Everton. There have. We, we know that City are probably not at their guilt edge best. Um, what first game in, in the WSL? No pre season, one Champions League game. That is it. They're going to be a little bit rusty still finding their groove. And Everton certainly need to capitalise on it. So I'm thinking tactical change, maybe half time. Good work by Ambergard. It doesn't get any easier for Everton. Chelsea next Sunday at Kings Meadow. Confidence levels of the Everton team from what I've seen on social media, from what I've heard uh, amongst the players, from interviews that I've seen. There's nothing at all, you know, they're not short of anything, but fully confident in their ability to break into that top three. So they won't fear Manchester City, they shouldn't fear Manchester City, they shouldn't fear the likes of Chelsea. It's just making that breakthrough, isn't it? No points against any side above them last season is pretty damning. It's almost like a psychological block because they've clearly got quality. Christensen invites Dali forward. Savecki with the header. Duggan. She wanted the foul there. Referee waves play on. A bit scrappy at the moment. Yeah, as much as it is effective a lineup it is for Izzy Christensen or Orogali to sit in front of that back three, it's not creating a lot going forwards. Here's Rasso. Trying to go around the outside. George does absolutely brilliantly. Stuck to her task, made the block, and has come away with the ball here and is making good progress. Brilliant tracking from Gabby George there, wasn't it? Marshall just showed a wide Haley Rasso, a former teammate, knows her exceptionally well, matched her stride for stride with a pacey wide player, took her time, went to block, managed to retain possession of the ball. Excellent defender from Gabby. Well, before her injury struck, she was just breaking into the England squad, getting called up for camps. Etc. It looks like she's fully recovered. Lasada, neat turn on the Spaniard. Weir. Slip it forward towards Janine Becky. Well read by Bjorn. Sure. Very clinical in front of goal, Jamaican international, 42 in 30 for her country. Golden boot last year with Bordeaux. 24 goals and 21 appearances. Yeah, she's been marshaled very well so far by Natalie Bjorn, Fabi George, Meg Finnegan. Well done. That's uh, Tony Duggan stopped in her tracks by Morgan. Rasso. That is a really good touch by Rasso. Daniel Turner diving in. It was rather a, a, a rash dive in, but Eddie Rasso rode that really well. 
when Everton get that turnover of possession, manage to get hold of the ball, can they keep possession? That time from the back, it was just cleared out to no one up top. Need to have an option, whether it's Anvergaard or whether it's Tony Duggan or whether it's Hayley Rasso, recognise that the ball is going to come long and be an option for them. Becky. And to find Weir. It's done really well to keep that one in. Oh, Darley's given it away to the industrious Weir. Lasada, here's Becky. Well defended towards Hayley Rasso. And here come Everton with Kenza Darley. Duggan dispossessed in a dangerous area. Becky trying to work the shooting opportunity. It's Janine Becky. It's 2 0. Wow. Janine Becky's probably been one of the highlights of this first half, Manchester City. But how much time she had will be the frustration for Sandy McKeever in goal for Everton, as well as her teammates. As she took her touch, the ball was squared back to the edge of the box. Simple turnover, really, possession. She drives in centrally. No pressure, no pressure, still no pressure. Cuts across, 18-yard box in the middle. I mean, I'm looking at it from a goalkeeping perspective. I would be absolutely seething at that. And uh, is it the fact that Everton don't play a back three particularly? But surely you've got to recognise the danger. Someone take responsibility and step to the ball. 2-0 would be a mountain to climb now for Everton. Three goals in six games at the Olympic Games. She's carried on that form that helped Canada to gold in Tokyo. But she was almost shepherded towards goal. I'd be absolutely seeing that in training if uh, if some of my teammates allowed that much time for you know in a, in a friendly almost atmosphere but in a game of this magnitude yeah it's pretty unacceptable i think it's a good thing it is quite tricky to get down from this gantry because otherwise you might be seeing rachel brown finish making a, an appearance in the dressing room at half time tempted indeed <laughs> you're going nowhere Stokes can't keep it in. Throw into Everton. I mean, it's, it's more, it's, a, it's lack of communication. You need someone to press the ball. Sometimes you need that trigger word from someone to be able to do that. You know, they've, they've lost players as well. I was thinking um, Hayley Rasso playing Savecki's role last year for Everton, how effective she is, how effective she was for, for Everton. That's a big loss down that right-hand side a dynamic type of player who's got defensive responsibilities as well. Here is Rasso to Shaw, and it's three! Everton are falling apart here, and Khadija Shaw gets a debut goal. Everton need to just get themselves together, get some steel back, re-emphasise the game plan. Tighten up centrally. Start communicating in a positive way with each other. So simple from a, a throw-in, turn, no pressure once again. Just, just no pressure, first balls, second balls. Willie Kirk will have some stern words at half-time. And that can't come quick enough for Everton. Manchester City making a statement on their opening game of the new WSL season. There were doubts coming into this one, the injuries, the lack of a pre-season. It looks like it hasn't affected them at all, although you've got to look at the Everton side of things as well. It's been too easy. Yeah, Everton will know they've not laid a glove on City. If if you're touch tight with a player and they drop the shoulder, have a bit of an amazing skill to be able to turn you, that's one thing, and they beat you for pace, you know, and they get the shot in. But to have had the luxury of five, six yards of space to be finishing from less than six yards out with no one marking you. It's very, very different.
you think it is the formation, Rachel, that's just not worked? That, well, that's what I can't think of anything else because individually these players are good players. They te technically and tactically understand what's required of them. Yes, or a, you know, you've got Nasser Bjorn at the back, who's a new player for Everton, but should have been in training with them for a good few weeks. They won't just have showed up and played a back three, but actually implement it in a game at game pace against the pace of Manchester City and the dynamic movement of Manchester City is a little bit different. So if they are unfamiliar with it, then oh, it's laid bare for all to see on a game like this. Weir with some good movement, Rasso. Driven ball in away by Finnegan. Still five minutes left until the break. This is where you'll see the leaders now step up. I want to see someone in an Everton shirt particularly step up and shake everyone, get everyone going, reorganise. Shaw goes down. Referee waves play on. Christensen and the guard. City back in their shape. Shaw is still down. Eventually, the referee has called a halt to things here, so Shaw can get some treatment. Seemed pretty innocuous. Just, it wasn't her standing leg, it was just the one that, so there wasn't a lot of weight going through it when it was swiped. But she's just uh, really only had the role of being a fox in the box. She's not had to do too much running. But what she has done is be in the right place when this uh, driving run from Haley Rasso, I mean, that was on the plate, in the right place, beautifully laid across from Haley Rasso. You're not going to make a mistake with a record that she has coming into this Manchester City team. She's not going to make a mistake from there. I mean, this is a chance for Everton to regroup to discuss what's gone wrong. Messages come on from the sidelines. Not a lot of animation with Willie Kirk in this instance. Natalie Bjorn leading the discussions. Yeah, Dan Carter is, is captain today and she's certainly more, sorry, Dan Turner, not Dan Carter, Dan Turner been at the club for a long, long, long time. She's uh, much more of a player who leads by example on the pitch rather than being particular vocal. Darling, picked up by Duggan. Everton can just have a moment at least before half time. They just change the mindset. Galli. Winner of four Serie A titles with Juventus. Turner. Christensen, Darley, Everton trying to find their feet again. It's a good little bit of build up play there, is he, Christian? Further up the pitch. Starting to have a little bit more influence on that, but that final ball, Kenza Darley, it's one of those that's deflates you slightly. You work so hard to possession of it and to make your way through the thirds. That final quality for Everton in the final third. This was the scoreline, the final scoreline, when these two met at Walton Hall Park, the usual home of Everton last season. Still a half and a couple of minutes to go. Becky will try and get onto this one. Good defending in the end by. 
Savecki. Short. Sada keeps possession. But you'll use that phrase many a time this season, Lasada keeps possession. <laughs> Anyone who's uh, the girls who I was chatting to before the show about playing alongside her at Arsenal when she was there previously, that is what she is all about. Possession, technique, uh, technical ability is unbelievable. What you might stereotype as a typical Spanish player, but a really exciting player to have in this Women's Super League. Very young fan. It's good to learn early that football is cruel. Cruel. There's nothing but disappointment <laughs> for many. Three minutes of time added on. City looking more than comfortable. Weir to Rasso. Oh, it's spilt by McKeever and she just manages to gather in the nick of time with Shaw lurking. Yeah, Rasso again. Between her and Janine Becky, they've been really hard to handle for Everton. Just on the outside of that, that back three, just pulling Gabby George out on this occasion. Really well to square it. Good play by Alex Greenwood once again. Showing really good defensive nous and the technique as well to shield the ball. Alex's development, both at club and country, has been unbelievable. She's never doubted herself. She's always been a very, very confident person in whichever position she's played. But being able to have that versatility, centre half as well as left back, she's an exceptional technician. All helps. I think she was very disappointed not to make the Team GB squad. Gareth Taylor sitting very comfortably indeed. Willie Kirk, a coiled spring, I'm sure, ready for a half-time team talk. It will be interesting to see if he makes any changes from the outset, because you, whether he admits it's a, a technical, um, sorry, a, t a tactical error or a tactical flaw as to why City are getting him, because it's there for everybody to see Janine Becky in that Wide left position, Hilly Rass on the wide right position. There's just too much space down the edges of that back three. City not allowing Everton out of their own half at the moment. Try and go long. Misjudged by Alex Greenwood, the first mistake she's made. Christensen nearly getting the ball to a on rushing Anvergaard. There it is, half time, a half that has belonged to Manchester City. Three goals up at the break, two from debutants Vicky Lasada and Khadija Shaw, along with the Olympic gold medalist Janine Becky, Rachel Brown Finnis. Yeah, it was it's disappointing from an Everton point of view. I think Manchester City have capitalised on a lacklustre and lacklustre performance from Everton. They started brightly, Everton. I thought Darley and uh, Angervard and Tony Duggan up top, the front three, looked like they could pose some problems for Manchester City. But City have flipped it. They played everything in the final third, whether that be through the midfield and out to Janine Becky or Hayley Rasso, or directly from the back, either from Steph Horton or Alex Greenwood. They're getting in and they're causing problems. It is half time and it's. Everton nil, Manchester City three. 
Well, it is uh, obviously for Everton a mountain to climb in the second half and so dispiriting for them as well, Farrow. When you think of, you know, all the preparation, the great pre-season you have, you've got these new signings, you've got a home crowd, you've got a crowd for the first time in 18 months, you, you're playing at Goodison Park and then to go in three goals down after a really frustrating first half, it's going to be tough for them to come back from that. Yeah, I think it's going to be tough to come back from 3-0. They've certainly, you know, I think the formation really hasn't helped them. I think they've been exploited in wide areas and they've struggled to come back from that first goal. So I would expect changes certainly to the formation at half time. Yeah, and you know, you, you kind of put your thing, kind of put your finger on what exactly didn't work for Everton. And we're kind of looking almost at the negatives at the moment, Rachel. You know, you're integrating nine new signings. That's tough. Obviously, you know, the first game of the season has always got a lot of pressure on it. But from a st sitting in the stand looking, the frustrating thing was that they didn't change anything when they could see that left-hand side was getting so easily exploited by Manchester City. Yeah, I think when you come in and play against City, you know that they're going to play three up front. You know they're going to play three high and they're, they're going to be on you. Uh, and they allowed that to happen. It, you know, they're not natural fullbacks. There's three centre halves in there, and they're just, it's not working at the moment. And I think City are being really disciplined with their wide players of keeping the width, of staying there. When, when Everton attack, they don't go back with them. They go, go on, we'll cause you a problem. We're happy to stay like that. And I think, you know, credit to City for being that disciplined and also for, for really punishing Everton. Yeah, you opened your campaign last night, Manchester United, with a win. You know how important it is to get off to that positive start. Yeah, for sure. And I'm sure Everton thought they were going to come here and take some points from Man City, but they've had a disappointing first half. And I think now it's about what you can change at half time. Well, Vicky Lozano was involved in so much good stuff, wasn't she, for Manchester City? And you warned us, you told us, you know, she's a special, special player. But again, it came from that space on the left-hand side. Yeah, I'm so happy for Vicky because, um, you know, she's back. She's looking happy at uh, playing football. And, uh, you know, this is fantastic left-hand side play, obviously. Getting the ball, keeping the ball, keep being nice and calm. Fantastic ball through to Caroline Weir. And when it came to Vicky here, you know, that I knew she's going to take a touch. I'm thinking, oh, she has she messed this one up, but no, she's put it in off the post. What a fantastic goal! But Farah, she's she's on her own there. There are no Everton shirts near her at that point. You know, she she obviously found the space. But with a player like that, you, you've got to get close to her. Yeah, I think she's controlled much of the game for Man City in there. She's very composed on the ball. A typical Spanish type player likes to get on it and dictate shorter passes. But in terms of the finish, the way she executed, the composure shown inside the 18-yard box is fantastic and something that. City needed just to settle them a little bit. That first goal really kick-started their, you know, their, their end to the um, first half. Yeah, they had had the lion's share of possession. And the first 10 minutes or so was fairly even, wasn't it? And then they really grew into the game. And as we say, it was because that left-hand side, they were getting Janine Becky, obviously, world-class, was finding herself with all kinds of space. She was getting the ball and she was moving it. And the chances were coming, Katie. Yeah, for sure. I think, as you can see in the clip, they're really exploiting the left-hand side. Um, Janine Becky holding the width and Caroline Weir making the runs along the back line and I think when the Everton wing back's too high there's so much space to exploit in beyond and that's where most of the goals have come from and most of City's success. You'd have, you'd have thought with, uh, with Manchester City how they you know, usually perform, they play with really high wide wingers and so you'd have thought that Everton would have done their research coming into the game and probably set up with a different formation. I think they've left themselves wide open in fullback areas. The gaps down the channel are massive. And, and Man City, credit to them, have exploited that. And three goals have come from you know, similar areas. You can see here the balls between centre half and fullback. It's too easy for, for Manchester City to get in down the sides. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it could have been more, couldn't it? Janine Becky getting the second for them. She likes scoring against Everton at four and nine for the Canadian Olympic champion. And uh, she'll have been happy with this one, Katie. Yeah, for sure. It's a great finish. I think as soon as Janine starts driving with the ball, she's going to cause problems. I think from the centre half, they need to be a little bit better. You've got to stay and keep pressure on the ball. You can't allow someone of Janine's quality a free shot on the edge of your box. And as soon as it opens up for her like that, I think the only option there is to put your bottom corner. And well, she ran through finish. four or five royal blue shirts there. Yeah, I, I actually felt sorry for, for Gabby George because Bjorn doesn't stay with her and, uh, and George just... She doesn't know whether to go or not. But, I mean, this goal is the one, really. That 
Everton just look a little bit lost, and it's a, it's a fantastic goal by Shaw or Bunny, as her shirt says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bunny's her nickname, and she's been allowed to have Bunny on her shirt as well, but uh, she will definitely be very happy with that. And uh, obviously the Jamaican international scored 22 goals in 20 for Bordeaux last season. We didn't quite know how she takes the WSL, but she's taken to it very nicely indeed. So Manchester City with that impressive 3-0 lead going into half-time. The other side of Manchester, the red half, Katie's half, uh, were in action last night. She led them in their opening game against Reading. Here's the best of the action with Mark Scott. Manchester United were unbeaten through their first 10 WSL matches last season. Staniforth dropping deep and then sending a ball into a promising area, which has caused some problems. And Leah Carlton can't take the chance. Clearest opportunity we've had by a long chalk. And Grace Maloney is the most relieved person in the building. There is Kelly Chambers leading Reading into their sixth successive year at the highest level of the women's game. She previously played for the club as well. That's a good pass. Hansen! The first goal of the new women's Super League season is scored by Kirsty Hansen. Lovely way to pass here. Hansen showed her exactly where she wanted it. It's a wonderful goal. It's a magnificent finish with the outside of the boot. Manchester United 1, Reading 0. Reading finished uh, last season in seventh after a bit of a rotten run of form at the back end of the campaign. They won just one of their last eight fixtures in the league. They're asking for a penalty in there. Don't get that. Do get a chance to have a go. Goal, it's off the bar. Well, it was all happening there. Brooke Chaplin hit this ever so well. Thought that she was slightly out with her placement. That would suggest that she was spot on, but hasn't got her just reward. Well, a let off for Manchester United then. Dalton after this. Barrier. Nicely done by Toon. And then the hit is in magnificently. Ola Balia with a beauty to double Manchester United's lead. It's her first goal for the club. And what a way to score it. Lovely give and go between Toon and then Balia. And this strike from the Spaniard was a screamer. A new era for Manchester United begins with three points on the board. Well, so much change in the WSL in terms of players in, players out. But for you, a new manager in Mark Skinner, Casey Stoney era has, has ended. And you know that both big characters in the women's game and obviously with formidable careers. So I, I imagine there has been a change in the culture and the tone of, of the club and, and how Mark Skinner approaches things. Yeah, there's been a huge change. Um, Casey did great. We obviously finished fourth place, but Mark's come in and brought a whole new energy. And I think you could see it in our performance yesterday. Um, he's brought new ideas from America, and I think he's done us really well so far. And you were saying earlier as well, he's a bit of a personality. He's got a, a quirky style of communicating. Yeah, real quirky. Um, everything Mark says comes along with an anecdote, and I think <laughs> it's so engaging and interesting to listen to. And He's a storyteller, but more importantly, he knows the detail, and that's what will stand us through the season. I was disappointed when I compared him to Ted Lasso, and you didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> if you've watched Ted Lasso at home, by the sounds of it, there's a bit of that going on. You need to watch Ted Lasso. Um, and there's obviously been movement as well in terms of players. You've lost some big players yourself, but the likes of uh, Tobin Heath and Kirsten Press uh, have gone, and new players coming in, and of course um, uh, Lauren uh, Reese as well. So how do you, James? Sorry, <laughs> how do you how do you kind of like feel the the jelly? Has, has gone on over the summer. Yeah, we lost some great players, but we've also signed some. And I think for us, Manchester United has always been about having a great environment. And Mark's come along and just bolstered that even more. He's really created connections between the staff and the players. And for us, team culture is really up there with that most importance. And ambitions for the season? 
Um, take every game as it comes, like everyone will say. Um, for us, we want to better what we did last year and hopefully playing like that, we can do. Were you impressed last night with what you saw from Manchester United? Yeah, I was. I was. I, I thought Reading start the, started the game were more confident, looked the more experienced, but Manchester United grew into the game and I loved the goals. Um, I thought Ella Toon was brilliant. The pass that she does for this goal, uh, Hansen's finish is fantastic. Outside of the left foot, slips past the keeper. Wasn't it? Yeah, brilliant goal. Yeah, she's a real talent, isn't she? Ella yeah, Toon. both Ella Toon and Hansen, fantastic young players and. Yeah, I mean, now they've got Mark Skinner in at Man United. He's very, you know, you know he's come through the ranks at uh, Birmingham. So he's very, very good at coaching young players and developing them. So I think he's a, a really good fit for this Manchester United team going forward. Good stuff. OK, well, there is plenty more football to come across the BBC this week, including this. Football's going nowhere in the 80s. From the back pages. After the game, it was all punch up, you know. To making headlines. Football became glamorous. Jack Walker meant business. All the drama on the pitch. And we received the ball. It's like a dance. He yeah, had somebody who went completely off script. And off it. I don't think anything prepares you for media attention. How our beautiful game became billion pound business. Great television, is <laughs> Fever Pitch. The rise of the Premier League starts Monday at 9 on BBC Two and iPlayer. We've also got uh, cricket highlights from the third day of the fourth test between England and India on today at the test. That's tonight, 7 o'clock on BBC Two. Uh, the women's football show returns tomorrow, 10.30 on BBC One, with highlights from all the weekend's WSL fixtures. And you can hear from some of the biggest names in women's football by subscribing to the Players Podcast on BBC Sound. Now, we just want to take a moment to reflect here because this week everyone at BBC Sport and indeed the wider sporting journalism community was devastated by the news of the death of Lance Hardy. Lance had been diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumour in March and he was a much-loved colleague. And it's, it's easy to forget a time when women's football wasn't on the telly very much at all. In fact, maybe just the FA Cup final, the one game of the year. Well, Lance was an early pioneer, pushing the BBC for more women's football coverage. He worked on World Cups and Euros, and many of the women you see on your screens today can thank Lance for a break in their early careers. He joined the BBC in 1994 and edited Final Score. He was the England field producer at many major championships for the men. He went freelance about a decade ago and worked on the Paralympics for Channel 4 and found more time to write. He was involved in publishing seven books, including one about his beloved Sunderland winning the 1973 FA Cup final. He was a phenomenal pro, brilliant company, and a much-loved colleague. And our thoughts and prayers are with his family and friends. Yeah, it is easy to forget that it's not that long ago uh, that women's football did not have the platform it has today. And the WSL, of course, has taken enormous strides. And it's interesting, we were having a chat, Rachel, earlier on about whether or not you know having a close connection to the men's side of a club makes a difference to the development and progress and some clubs have tighter relationships than others don't they what are your thoughts on that i, I just think it's about it, about the club wanting you wanting women's football wanting to see the value in women's football rather than sort of token gestures and i think we're, we're getting there i think there's a couple of clubs that do it really really well um, but I think in the whole, we want women's football to be there, be top quality value so we can see those players getting the best and performing at the highest level. Thank you very much. Let's get on with the action then. You see the subs coming on there. Robin Cowan can tell us more. Thank you, Gabby. Yes, as we expected after that first half for Everton, changes at the break for Willie Kirk's side. And we are going to get our first glimpse of what has been described as one of the most exciting prospects in the women's game. Hannah Benison is coming on for Kenza Dali. And Claire Emsley is also going to come on to the pitch for her first minutes of the new season. So perhaps a change of shape, we'll have to wait and see. Megan Finnegan, the centre-half, has come off, so it looks like Rachel Brown finished that yeah. Everton are averting to a back four. Yeah, Gabby George, centre-half with Bjorn. Dan Turner, left-back, where she was generally played. Ricky Seveke, right-back. But exciting, as you said, to see Hannah Benison. A record 
signing for the club, a club that's moving in the right direction with regards to resources and funding and infrastructure. Let's see what she can bring. As Willie Kirk said that she has the potential to become the best player in the world. It was a club record fee that Everton paid Rosengard for her. And she made her senior debut for the Sweden squad at the age of 17. Here is Galli. Now Turner. If Everton are to get anything out of this, going to have to have a quick start. Emsley trying to find Anvergaard. Manchester United complete that piece of defending early on in the second half. Well, already that's the, the change in formation has allowed Galley to sit in front of the back four, has allowed Izzy Christensen to split and be higher up, play more of a, a, a 10 role. And there are more options up front than when Everton are in possession and moving forwards. Turner. Receives the ball back from Emsley. It's a decent cross. Nearly caught out. Benemir. I mean, that is a different team, isn't it, that's come out this second half. C clean and crisp. Precise movement. Underlap from Dan Turner. Excellent. The no-look pass from Claire Emsley. You'd love to see it. And she's a natural wide player, Claire Emsley. Great pace about her. Will hug that touchline. Look to either cut in or deliver early. Corner kick. It's towards the near post. Could be a chance here for Duggan. Tries to chip the keeper on target. Easy take in the end for Benamir. Yeah, Tony Dunn didn't quite get the angle she wanted on it. Needed it to be stood up as she tried to get the butt of the foot, the foot under the ball, just a bit more angle across. So it was a bit too easy for Benemir, but really positive from Everton these opening few minutes. They want to show that they are contenders for the top three, the Champions League places, but that is delightful from Caroline Weir. Here's Becky. Cross deflected into the arms of McKeever. In possession and going forwards, Everton have looked excellent so far this second half, but defensively is where their woes were. First half, they still need to tighten up. Jean Becky, as good a player she is, needs certainly more of a contest. A loose pass. Shaw is fouled, but Everton just looking a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, well, a back four, if you're used to a back four, then players chopping and changing or going to a back three, understanding, it's, you know, it's those subtle nuances that if you're playing up against a team who's not made any changes, who, with regards to formation, who have players like Janine Becky, Caroline Weir, Bunny Shaw, players who are very competent and fluid in their approach, then they, that is why it's been 3 0 at half time. Shaw, one of the goal scorers. And the guard barging into Greenwood. A little bit late. The pleading look to the referee there. Didn't see too much wrong with that. It was Alex Greenwood's follow through that was that caught her. <laughs> Seeing things. I hope I'm through. not seeming biased, am I? <laughs> that, that is genuinely. I, just saying, I think he's seen that through royal blue eyes. <laughs> Tinted specs, if there if such a thing exists. Emsley manages to win the ball back. It's dealt with really well by the two England centre half, Steph Horton, Alex Greenwood. Good shape now, just look at the back four as that ball was played. Dropped at the right time. Dealt with Hayley Rasso a lot more efficiently. 
good cover. Sevaki position was excellent. So they already look more comfortable. It is a corner to Manchester City. The back line of Everton certainly look more comfortable. Let's see Hayley Rasso has got taste to burn. Celebrates her 27th birthday tomorrow, Rasso. Just quite the football journey herself. The broken back in 2018 while playing in the USA. She managed to recover from that and play at the top level for club and country. She got back to the World Cup, didn't she? Just, uh, just over incredible. a year later. It was an incredible journey. And the guard helps it on towards Duggan. I like what Everton are doing now as far as Benison, the role she's taken up. You've got Rora Gali sat in front of the back four, but then Benison's posing more threats. When City are in possession, she's there to press. We're so confident on the ball. She's just so difficult to get the ball off, Caroline Weir. It's a terrific game. Yeah, moments like that remind me of uh, when Kelly Smith played and the angles that she used to um, have of her body uh, to, to the ground to be able to hold off players and have that centre of gravity that means you just look effortless when you change direction, but you're also a really strong point to be able to hold players off. Really technically gifted players. Inviting Stokes forward. A little bit too much on the pass. Been with City since 2015, Demi Stokes. I mean, 3 0 up at half time. Carve Taylor will just be ensuring that this starting 11 that has remained in the second half get through without any injuries. Squad decimated by injuries at the moment. Doesn't want any players adding to that list. Wonderful touch. And Emsley can't quite get there. Some of the Man City players weren't happy. Emsley, in trying to get the ball, just caught the goalkeeper. She doesn't seem to mind, though. No, she did exceptionally well there, Bermure. Where she came out, read the timing of it was brilliant. Wipe out your player. Play does leave her, Ramsley does leave her foot in. Might have had a little word with her. Duggan, Christensen. Much better from Everton this. And a trip and a free kick in a very good position here. Just brings the crowd back to life as well. It was good play. Everton have been sharp in this second half in how they've played in those little one touches you see in Hanvergaard, Benison. She's looked lively since she's come on, not just in her attitude as far as um, trying to work really hard, but the timing, she looks a clever player. Her movements have been in sync with the other two midfielders playing 4-3-3 now. Could this be door open for Everton? Could be a way back. Turn of the left footer. Will it be the right foot of Izzy Christensen? It's Turner, goes low! And that's a tremendous save from Benemur. That is a terrific save, although it's the side that she's expected to make that save on the precision from Dan Turner. It was hard and low and right in the corner. But Benemur does everything exceptionally well, gets down hard. Strong wrist, deflects it wide. Best chance for Everton so far. Just needed a little bit more pace on it, didn't it? And for a third-choice goalkeeper, she's doing pretty well. And she did pretty well midweek against Real Madrid. You just wonder if Gareth Taylor will have eyes on the return leg at the Academy Stadium on Wednesday. One all in the first leg. So not through yet to the group stage of the Champions League. Well, from what I understand, Ellie Robert will be a few weeks off being fit. So 
should Karen Bardsley be back in as an option? She's not today. It's between those two, but so far Benny Muir has been pretty faultless. Everton's renewed energy has the crowd getting behind them, but here comes Shaw. Rasso making the run down the line. She's only got Becky to aim for in the box. And uh, another welcome back to Everton for their former teammate Hayley Rasso, this time from Gabby George. I want to question why she left, but maybe we've seen a few of the answers. <laughs> Here is Becky. The deflection was kind in the end for McKeever. Was well, good feet though. You had to watch that one all the way when it catches. It's a little deflection. It can be a really awkward spin on it. Decent strike from Becky, but I'd backsand McKeever from there all day. George into Christensen. Bjorn. It's good interception by Becky. Here's Weir. Just wonder, Rachel, could Willie Kirk have changed this earlier? Well, the number of times you see managers wait till half time because it feels that that's the right thing to do when actually after the first goal it, it wasn't the first attempt and it wasn't the first passage of play that was almost an exact replica that had opened up Everton you could see that the formation wasn't working um, so yeah I would also question whether that should have been made earlier and he'll reflect on that with his team and his staff and probably suggest yeah <laughs> so Gabby George sticking Gabby George close special. to Russell then <laughs> very much her club isn't it Everton for Gabby George yeah she was at the uh, Manchester United Academy and at the time they didn't have a women's team so a number of players from Manchester United um, when they got to you know that age of 17 came over to Everton or you know other Liverpool as well Manchester City Weir's corner away by Emsley Duggan a little bit more precise on that pass and Everton could have been in on the counter. Instead, it's Lasada showing some good feet. Becky trying to get round Galley. Yeah, Galley shepherded her really well there, actually. Showed her down the line. Forced into an error, but she's been a handful, hasn't she, Janine Becky, today? Not just because of Everton's tactical lacking in the first half you would suggest and giving her the freedom and the open space to be able to run where she wanted I mean she's proven herself when played the friendly against England just before the Olympics um, she was an absolute handful for the England team you know can't always put your finger on exactly you know why she's so good or so effective she's always a consistent performer for her country there have been some question marks actually during her city career but Started this season well. It's just such a high standard when you come into a team like this, especially in those wide positions. She's been played at right back occasionally for City. Position I'm not sure she's particularly happy with playing. We're pulling out the flicks and tricks. With the news of Kim Little's retirement from the international team, maybe she's passing the baton on to Caroline Weir as the technical and senior player who will lead Scotland. And certainly, I wouldn't say like for like, they have certainly have their differences, but absolutely from a influence, from a you know being able to thread a pass, read a situation, look like you've got so much time on the ball in tight situations is often the case in that eight or ten situation they are both exceptional players Benison into Christensen oh that's a 
great ball, chance, flag is up. Duggan has missed anyway. Was just offside, wasn't it? Lovely run from Tony, drifting in off the left, just getting uh, off of uh, Marcus' shoulder. Fractionally offside, didn't need to go ahead of her. Forgot to check a run on Esme Morgan. Confident, free-flowing Tony Duggan, but this is a glimpse of, you know, what were her, her best years when she was flying high, full of confidence. Not suggesting she's not, but we've not seen her week in, week out for such a long period of time. It's great to have her back. We hope to see her back to her best. Here's Georgia Stanway. With Mars Gordon after a whacking pre-season, which actually resulted in her having to have surgery. Can't be comfortable. And here comes Ellen White as well. It's like Ellen White, who's had an injury post-Olympic Games, where she lit that up as well. The last two major tournaments, Ellen White has been on fire in front of goal. She has. The conversion rate's ridiculous, isn't it? The number of chances that she gets to actually put in the back of the net. She's so efficient with those numbers. And although Manchester City, current state of play, don't need to bring her on, I think it's good to get game time. So not a lot of pre-season for them. We're with the free kick for City. Missed by Becky. So double substitution imminent for City. One that doesn't really lessen their quality. Galley. It's a bit careless from City. Coombs just nicks it off the toe of Christensen. Outside of the right boot pass from Lasada. Stokes making good ground. Becky. Weir. Linking up well with Becky. Good defending from George. It's a really clever play from Greenwood. Oh, and Katija Shaw's gone down. Oh, and it's off the bar. So close to a fourth. And the ball over the top for Claire Emsley. Horton gets there first, just. Well, there were about three occasions there where I thought City were either going to score or get a penalty in the box. Everton, that's what happens, I guess, when you concede so much possession. A little bit tired, as in with regards to the timing of your challenges. Becky there, striking a bar. And she's had numerous chances, open space, but it's Everton's turn now. Yeah, there were a couple of occasions there where Everton players looked like they were going to concede a penalty. And the corner kick still isn't cleared, and Galley the turn and shot wide. And the angle was always against her, turning on the outside on her right foot there. Good to hear the crowd have something to get on their seat about. Claire Emsley's been a, a really positive introduction for Everton. Out and out, wide player, pace to burn down that left-hand side. Really put Steph Orton under pressure to concede that corner. And Caroline Weir's afternoon is done. She's been her usual influential self. And Georgia Stanway comes on in her place. Ellen White on the field for Khadija Shaw and what a summer she has had. Six goals in four games for Team GB. White with the flick on.
if you've not seen Ellen White before, her game's developed so much. She could have an opportunity here. She is brought down immediately by Bjorn. Clever by Ellen White, and that's she does that it, as one facet of what she does so well in her game. Being able to feel the pressure and react to it. It's a free kick in a really dangerous position for Manchester City. I was saying before, she's really refined her skills in front of goal. She's a player now who stays between the the, the parameters of the of the of the goal when the ball's wide. Previously, she'd cover a heck of a lot of yardage, a lot of miles on the pitch. Fantastic and phenomenal athlete, but now best place to use her predatory skills in the box. Opportunity here from the set piece and two of the best for City over this one. Greenwood. It looks like it is going to be the captain, Steph Horton. It's Horton and it is four. That is absolutely brilliant from Steph Horton. What a beautifully struck free kick from Steph Horton. I was watching Sandra McKeever line the wall up. She had four players covering her right-hand side, a little gap, and then two to cover the left-hand post, leaving the gap to be able to see it. But when it's struck like that, what is even the point of a wall? It goes over the wall, beautifully placed. Looks like the one that was scored at Wembley against Brazil in 2012. She's done that a million times. What a goal from Steph Horton. Sandy McKeever grounded didn't move a muscle. Apart from her neck to watch it go into the back of the net. That's the this is the, the case, and I would suggest even more so in women's football, given the height of the wall compared to a, a men's wall in football. The draft excluder has been widely used, so it would allow the wall to jump for the sole purpose of trying to make the goal smaller. Should they have done that? I'm not saying it would have worked, but that is exactly in that definitive setup as to why the draft excluder is brought in. Not a role I particularly would have liked to have been employed as the Well, you the would only have lying down two peoples. <laughs> it's very true. And yeah, not one I would have been asked to do. But if I was asked by you, I'd, <laughs> I'd do it. <laughs> Yeah, you have to cover at least more than one foot of the goal, don't you, really? <laughs> Thanks. Robin. Gally, she took that well, fired at it. Been a, certainly been a much improved performance in this second half for Everton. But when you think of it in terms of shots on goal, actual chances created, still very, very limited. They've certainly shored things up at the back. City have not had as much freedom as they had in the, the first half. The tactical change has definitely helped and can't see Everton replicating a three at the back, certainly against the calibre or a style of play in Manchester City again. Still 20 minutes to go. Ben Amir's had a couple of saves to make, but uh, nothing truly spectacular. No one down hard and low to her right. Some kind of cross stroke shot. She's not very assured in everything she's done. Stepping into those shoes of Ellie Roebuck, England and Team GB, go GB goalkeeper. Good anticipation from Amber Gard. Good skill as well. Can she find the cross? Benison was in there. Emsley couldn't take the shot. Here's Christensen. Galley. The moment of worry from Manchester City. It looks like it's passed. Turner. Brought down, free kick. 
Yeah, as good and as dynamic a play as it was in that final third in the box for Everton. Manchester City marshalled the situation exceptionally well. Really sharp. An in swinger. Rasso, Rasso on Turner there. That's a bit of a revenge. Oh, that's a good looking ball, but well defended by Greenwood. Got there first. Now Christensen brought down by Rasso. Oh, and a bit of afters as well. It's gone on in the WhatsApp group. <laughs> if anyone can find out, it's you. Well, the delivery from Christensen just a few seconds before was exceptional. It just didn't have the runner across the front post to get a goal for Everton. Goes again. It is Christensen. It's another good delivery, but Manchester City get there first to clear. Turner, oh, trying to work it out towards the far side, and Christensen, it's cut out. Too much on that ball for Ellen White, though. Uh, just too late. Should have played it a second or so before, earlier. Ellen White was still in her own half, wouldn't have been offside. Just calling for it for straight she didn't get it. Let off for Everton. This will be a 19th game in a row unbeaten in the WSL for City. He lost once last season, and that was away at Chelsea. And ultimately, that cost them the title. They came second, two points behind Chelsea. It just shows how those fine margins can cost you. Yeah, I remember last summer, Gareth Taylor was coming in as new manager, having taken over from Nick Cushion, who had been there since. Manchester City started as a women's team in the Women's Super League. So a big overhaul with regards to style of play, to personnel. So a lot of changes which took its toll in those opening few games. The performances weren't as Gareth Taylor would have liked them to be. But Double. certainly not the case this season. Double sub for City. Lauren Hemp is on. And another debut this time for Alana Kennedy, another Aussie who joined in the summer from Spurs. Yeah, I like Alana Kennedy. I thought she was exceptional at, uh, at Spurs, probably their best player and uh, a real leader, real talker, real organiser, really dangerous on set pieces as well. Here is Hemp. Also had a very good Olympic Games, showcased her talents. Didn't get a goal. Needs to work on perhaps scoring a few more, but such a valuable contribution to the team. Strength, power and ability, technique. She's got pretty much everything and still just 21 years old. Well, when you team her up with her delivery and ability to drive into the box and you've got Ellen White waiting to receive the pass from Hemp. They are such a duo to try and contend with. Certainly seeing them link up so well for England and for Team GB. Not a sub you want to see at 4-0 down if you're an Everton fan or player. At least those inside Goodison have seen some fabulous goals, not least that free kick from Steph Horton. City still looking fresh. Here is Kennedy. The Aussie invasion continues in the WSL. Doesn't it just? I think when Joe Montemuro, uh, the former Arsenal manager, came over and I can't recall whether there were any Australians who previously established themselves in the league, but certainly there was a surge of, of uh, Australian based players coming over to the Women's Super League and it certainly hasn't relented. And when you look at their performance and how they knocked Team GB out of the Olympics, 
it's great to have them here for the WSL. As Kennedy did score in that ridiculous game, quarter final between Australia and Team GB. Sada fouled by Turner. Yeah, what a summer of sport we've had, eh? To, to feast your eyes on, certainly myself with the two children watching the Olympics and the Paralympics, all the football that's been on air to watch. And, you know, it's never been so true that to, to be it, you need to see it. And we've had so many opportunities, just like today, so many young fans in the crowd to be able to see some of their role models, to see that these are professional athletes, see that these are, you know, at the pinnacle of their sport, doing something that they love. It's so inspiring for young people as well as moderately old people like myself. <laughs> Good to see the telly is still a valuable instrument in parenting. Uh, next offering from us next week, next Sunday, Chelsea against Everton. That's on BBC Two at quarter past 12. And if you want to join the conversation, go the hashtag this season. Hashtag BBC WSL. Stanway. Can't be comfortable playing in a mask like that. No needs must. Yeah, well, precisely. Turner. Here's Emsley. Teasing delivery, Kennedy was there to defend. Emsley picks it up again, another Scottish international. My point of view of being at Goodison Park here on the opening weekend of the new WSL season, it would be nice to see Everton get something for the crowd to cheer about. But as we know, it's Manchester City have built this team from when they were admitted to the WSL on a solid foundation. They really don't concede many goals. Absolutely critical to that has been Steph Horton, generally. And a midfielder of Keir Walsh, Jill Scott, Ellen White up top. A um, few of those names missing currently, but absolutely that spine of the team is has been ever present. Started with Karen Barsley in goal. Through injury, been superseded by Ellie Roebuck, but yes, absolutely. Hard to break down. It's been key to their foundation of their success. Turner. It's got Claire Emsley up alongside her. Here is the substitute. Cross in, just over the head of Amber Guard, claimed by Benamir. Yeah, it was the right idea, wasn't it? Cut back inside on a right foot, whip it in. Just couldn't quite get enough whip. It drifted a little bit to the back post. Made it slightly easier for Benamir to come. But again, confident, good collection, safe hands from Benamir, making her standing in for Ellie Roebuck and her debut for Man City. has been capped for France. Moved to Manchester City in 2019, having spent her entire career in France, various teams. Savecki, given away to Coombs. I barely mentioned Laura Coombs playing in that Number four, roll in front. Different role to Kira Walsh. Tends to get the ball from the defence and be the orchestrator. Laura Coombs more of a breaker-upper of play and simple pass. Still very effective. She's quietly gone about her business this afternoon. Sebeki, Danish international, it's her second season with Everton.
Horton prevents the corner. Ten minutes remaining. Another substitution for Manchester City. It is Jill Scott coming on. A player of vast experience. Spent the second half of last season on loan at Everton, where she got a few more minutes. It'll be interesting to see how much she's used by City this season. Yeah, not a lot of playing time under Gareth Taylor since he came in. With the options of Sam Mewis last season. So time was limited for Jill Scott, and with the Olympics upcoming, she made the decision to transfer to Everton with good success. And the Euros next summer should be desperate for time on the pitch. England hosting the European Championships in 2022. We'll be camper vanning around the country, won't we, Robin? <laughs> I didn't know I was invited. <laughs> well, I've told you how I'm getting round. I just meant you can come and visit if you like. Oh, thanks. If there's room for a little one. <laughs> Tent outside. <laughs> and there's a podcast tonight, isn't there? Rachel Brown finishes Camper Van Tales coming soon. Christensen away by Kennedy. Nicely done by Gabby George. Benison. Neat turn. Emsley. Amber Guard's in there. And Steph Horn. It's an unorthodox, but it worked. Just hooked it away. But good burst of speed from Claire Emsley down the right hand side. Switched over from the left. She's looked bright since she's come on. Corner kick is taken and Anbergar is off. And Valerie Gova on. Made a really good impact last season when she joined Everton. Eight goals. Scored on this ground against Chelsea in the FA Cup as well. And Sorensen as well. Nicolene Sorensen on. The second. One on ahead of this corner kick for Tony Duggan. And finally, Lucy Graham also on. There is Sorensen. Lucy Graham is on. Another Scott. Valerie Govan and corners. If the delivery is right, there's not many better than hers head of the ball. It's Emsley. George does well to keep that in. Not the greatest ball back to Turner, but she manages to dig the cross out. Govan! The flag is up. Good save by Ben Amir once again. Keeps that clean sheet. She wasn't to know. Oh, what a brilliant save. As, as the ball went out to, to Dan Turner, could see Govan was free at the back pole. She picked her out excellently. Oh, she's on side when we're seeing the replay, absolutely on side. But it's a great save. Ben Amir gets herself over to the near post, top hand, tips onto the post. Great power behind that header from Govan with her first touch from coming on. Hemp wins it back, showing her power. Try to pick out Rasso. A little bit too much on the pass. Easy with Lauren Hemp, she can hurt you. She might have looked quiet, not really done much since she's come on, but turn over possession, she'll pick your pocket and she'll power away from you. Eat my dust. <laughs> Such strength. Lucy Graham and Sorensen, probably two of those disappointed not to start, but you know, we're virtually ever present last season. But with the competition for places ramped up this season with all the signs that Willie Kirk has made. Great 
Graham with the corner in. George. Emsley. Trying to make some progress down that far side. So Chelsea up next for Everton. How surprised will you be if Willie Kirk lines up the same way he started this game? Yeah, he won't. I think he just recognises how exposed his uh, back three were when that happened. Just too much space for any wide players. And if you look at Chelsea's setup, their front three, their wide players are similarly different, but similar effectiveness. Um, and so, yeah, he has to be a little bit more pragmatic. It's great to be confident and come out and think, right, we're going to take our game to them. But you also have to have a little bit of give and take, a bit of respect for what they do and what they've done so well, so consistently well. And it'll be a similar approach I would anticipate to this second half as it will be setting up against Chelsea next week. Here comes the corner. Oh, at the back post. Oh, no. If Everton not got a goal these last few minutes. They've come so close. City have managed to maintain the clean sheet for now. I think it was Sebeki, wasn't it, at the back? Just couldn't quite tow it home. That would have been something for this crowd to cheer. Nearing the end of the game, it's time to ask Rachel Brown finish for the Barclays FA Women's Player of the Match. Yeah, my pick, Manchester City, Janine Becky. I think in the first half, she was at unplayable in a lot of occasions, partly down to Everton's um, allowance of her a lot of space on the pitch. But I think the way she used the ball, the way she drove with the ball in field, she got a goal as well. I think she's been outstanding and she did the work on the board, early doors in the first half, which meant that City have had cruise control in this second half. She's not had a bad summer, has she? Not been bad at all. Gold medal round her neck. It looks like her good form is continuing. So Man City have Real Madrid, second leg of the Champions League midweek, and then after that, next WSL game next week at home to Spurs. It's wonderful to see so many games in, you know, in the men's stadiums at Goodison Park, at the Emirates tomorrow, the Amex at Villa Park, at Tottenham Hotspur Spurs Stadium. You know, this is where we are with women's football now. Could Manchester City add a fifth? Lasada. Again, Lauren Hemp just doesn't want to give anything up. Great play. White did well with that because it was behind it. Yeah, the first chance really for Ellen White to get on the end of anything, any sort of supply. And as you said, really contorted herself exceptionally well to, to get a shot on target there. Talking about how efficient she is, any sort of chance that's on target. Four minutes added on. Bit of a miserable 
opening day for Everton. Started in sunshine, didn't it, the ground, and now it's clouded over, and I think that sort of summarises maybe Willie Kirk and his team's day. This is where he's going to earn his money, though. Pick them up. Get that confidence that he'd got going back. Sorensen, really good play, good turn of pace. Up against Demi Stokes, who's no slouch. Yeah, you're right, because it's a long season, and when you write off that first half, which I think is the best thing to do, it was a tactical error by Willie Kirk. I'm sure he'll admit that himself, whether openly or within the team that when you compare how Everton have competed in the second half against Manchester City, they're not too far off. Kennedy cutting out the through ball there. And it's going to be a foul and a first booking of the game. Yellow card for Bjorn. I'm not sure that was really necessary. I don't think Stanley was going to get there, but uh, maybe a little bit of frustration. Yeah, I would agree, frustration. It's not been the dream start that a lot of these players, when they signed and all the talk about playing at Goodison Park in the open day season, against Manchester City, hasn't materialised. Another coming together between Turner and Rasso. lot really in that I think Rasso has been clever more than anything but you were talking about her journey the fact that she would had a broken back not too long ago and genuinely had to learn to walk again spent at least six months in a neuro rehab centre um, certainly with any individual any player you assess the situation but with a player who has a history of a back injury as severe as Hayley Rasso went through I guess even more care and attention and insurance that she is 100% to carry on is required. Remarkable recovery. Gareth Taylor's getting his coat. He knows this is done. But it's been a very good debut for Hayley Rasso against her former side. Showing the qualities that City wants in a player. And despite the injuries, despite the absences, it's been a really good opening game for City and a real statement. Should mention again with 12 teams in the WSL, it can come down to things like goal difference when it comes to getting the title. So this is not a bad start at all. No, and, and Gareth Taylor's team really steamrolled uh, two thirds of the season. Once they finally got going and gathered momentum, they were so hard to score against, as well as, as you said, doing plenty of goals past teams. That's a consolation for Everton. Emsley shot charge down. Manchester City keeping the door shut and getting their four goals and trying to keep the clean sheet as well. Well, she certainly earned it, Ben Amur, making a debut in the WSL for Manchester City. It's hard to know what to expect when there's not really a lot of footage of a, of a goalkeeper. It's one of those positions where you're in or you're out, you don't get token minutes here and there. You're in because someone's injured, or you're out because someone's back from injury. So... She's bided her time, certainly two years at the club before she's got a chance. Govan asking a lot of Sorensen. And that might just be the game up for Everton. There it is. The game won in the first half. Three goals and 11 minutes for Manchester City.
overcame Everton. They added a fourth thanks to a brilliant free kick from their captain, Steph Horton, in the second half. Improvements from Everton, but marginal in the context of the 90 minutes. And Rachel Brown finished a good opening day for Manchester City, for Everton, work to be done. Yes, there's a plain and simple review, that's the case. We said before that the work that Manchester City put in in the first half, really kind of using the the setup, the tactical setup that Willie Kirk had done, three at the back for Everton, played into their hands. They weren't to have known that. Maybe he should have made a change earlier on, before half-time. He did that at half-time, went back to a 4-4-2 but it was a mountain to climb. An opening day victory for City, for Everton, defeat, and a big one. Full-time, Everton nil, Manchester City four. Kirk would have wanted uh, for his women because 4-0 equals the worst defeats that they had last season. At least the, the consolation, I guess, the second half as an overview, an improved performance from them. They had some chances and the Manchester City goalkeeper did really well to kick some of them out. Yeah, I think they were better in the uh, in the second half. I think uh, bringing Govan on, I thought she looked comfortable. She's uh, She looked like a real player and she, she was fantastic for them last season. But... Um, it's a question mark and I don't want to be horrible now, was it? Everton being better or Man City just dropping off and accepting that they've got a 4-0 win. So, sorry, be it putting it out there. But, um, yeah, I think um, Everton have got some work to do and they'll, I think they'll be disappointed with today. Yeah, three goals in the first half is, is always a mountain to climb for, for the opposition coming back on that. And it was just 1-0 in the second half, but it was a very special one, wasn't it? Uh, Steph Horton's free kick, Farah, talk us through this. Yeah, I mean, Steph's renowned for this, isn't she? She's a, a set, set piece specialist and yeah, just bending it over the top of the wall and into the top corner. Be beautifully curled away from the keeper. The keeper has no chance actually to, you know, even get herself across. And what about the conversation that was had in commentary uh, between Robin and Rachel about the draft excluder there? Obviously, the wall doesn't move and, you know, women generally are going to be smaller than men in, ter in terms of the draft excluder being used in the men's game. Is that something that should have been uh, brought in there, do you think? I'm actually coaching at Reading and we spoke something about that, you, you know, whether it's worth using or not. But, yeah, we, uh, you, you never normally see a, a female that would, would play it under anyway. So, yeah, I don't know how... It would work here in the female game. Um, Rachel's your goalkeeping expert, so she will know, you know, what best would help her out. Overall, Manchester City looked really impressive, though, didn't they, Katie? And you know, as a Manchester United player, you're not going to say too much about how brilliant they were. But you know, those missing kind of pieces, perhaps that, that saw them just come second last season, they may have brought in the players that could change that. Yeah, exactly. They've made a few good signings, and you could see that today. Two of them getting on the score sheet, and I think they was very fluid in the play and. They look like they're going to be a side to be reckoned with. Yeah, Manchester City, of course, finished second only to a defeat to Chelsea last season. That was the difference between them and finishing top of the table. It looks just like it's going to be as tight as ever, Rachel. Yeah, it does. And I think, you know, when you've heard people talk about Manchester City before this game, is are they going to finish first, second? People were tipping them as third. Well, watching them today, they're definitely up there. They're going to push everyone. Uh, so it'll be a good game. Guys, it's been brilliant having your company today. Farah is wearing Emacy on her left wrist there, um, a band, which doesn't mean she's going to a festival. She's going off to play on Soccer Aid. <laughs> so best of luck to you, Farah, tonight. Uh, you're playing for England, of course, against the rest of the world. Uh, Rachel, always great to see you. Thank you very much. And Katie, best of luck with Manchester United and the rest of this season. Everton, uh, well, they'll play it again next week, but it's a mountain to come again. It's the current champions, Chelsea, for them next weekend, and it's live on the BBC. From all of us, bye-bye. <laughs>